Welcome to the channel. This is the second video in a short tutorial series I'm doing on the Ray programming framework. And if you have no idea what Ray is, or if you have no idea what you're watching, the first video explains the Ray framework itself, kind of all the context you might need to know to understand things in this video. So I recommend going back to that one if I cover anything in this video that you don't really have any idea what I'm talking about or what I'm saying. Now to recap, we have Ray Core with the Task and Actor API. We saw Ray Tasks and how we can do remote function execution with Ray Tasks. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the Ray Actors API. And in later videos, I'll be doing some tutorials on some of the specific Ray APIs or libraries built on top of Ray Core, like hyperparameter tuning and Ray serve to actually serve machine learning models. Now, Ray tasks are essentially just remote functions. They're functions that you run on either a different process on a single machine or in a different node on a cluster. And the key thing about these is that tasks are really stateless functions. You basically assume that the environment they're running in takes input and gives output, very much in the functional programming paradigm. Actors, on the other hand, are a somewhat unique abstraction to these Python distributed computing libraries. So there are actor frameworks out there. They're a little bit more lower level. Akka is one of the most kind of used actor framework and people often use actor frameworks to build distributed systems. But Ray actually gives us the actor abstraction in just a normal Python class. So actors, if tasks are remote functions, actors are remote classes or objects. And we'll see, we'll see what that looks like in just a second. And the key difference with actors is that they maintain internal state. So just like classes in Python have some state, they have some methods, they have attributes. Actors are essentially remote objects that can maintain their own state and they can have their own remote methods. So here I'm starting where we left off last time in the intro to Ray notebook. And if you're just coming to this video, I'll link below to the GitHub repository with all the code, data, and resources, and, and slides, and everything. So if Ray tasks are the remote analog of functions, Ray actors are the remote analog of just Python classes. So let's start and just create a class. In this case, let's just have a person class that's going to have some state and some methods. So each person, let's say we want to give them a name and something like an age. So let's say that self.age will initialize it to just a random age between, let's say, 10 and 80. And let's give them a name and let's just randomly pick it from some array of, of names. So here, when we initialize a new person, we're just setting their name to be one of these names randomly choosing from, from this list here. And of things that they can do to kind of show the internal state, let's say that we can define an age function. And let's call it grow older so it doesn't clash with the age attribute. And in this, all we're gonna really do is look at self.age and plus equals one. So let's say they grow older by, by one and let's just return self.age once we do this so we know what age they're currently at. So if we define this class, we can instantiate a new person. Let's say person equals just person. And here we now have a person. We can do person.age. This person was randomly initialized to be 22. We can say person.name. This person is named John. But if we initialize a new person, that new person's age is 43 and their name is Ashley. So every time we call this constructor for a new person, we initialize a new person with a age and, and name. So right now, this is just a normal Python class, not doing anything interesting or exciting. And again, the magic of Ray is all we need to do is add a ray.remote annotation to this person class. So now this is a remote person or a actor essentially in the Ray framework. And just like with remote functions, we would call dot remote on the function name for remote classes or, or actors, we call remote on the constructor. So person.remote essentially calls the constructor 
And whatever we pass to dot remote, we can actually pass to the constructor of that class. But for ours, we don't actually need to pass any arguments to the constructor. And to make this interesting, let's create a bunch of them like we did before. So for I in range, let's make 10 people. So just like we had a bunch of different URLs that we were parsing in this distributed fashion, we're creating a bunch of these remote actors in this distributed fashion. So if we actually look at what these people are, we can see just like with the tasks, we had these object references. Here we have these actor classes, which are essentially references to a Python class or object on a potentially remote machine. Now to actually inspect these people here, let's go and actually just make a say hello function. And say hello is just gonna say their name and their age. So we can just use Python template strings to do this. And let's say, hi, I'm self.name and I am self.age. So now whenever we call say hello, we're gonna return this and and since we added this new method, let's just recreate our people. We have all these people or persons. And now if we look at, let's say just one of them, people zero, we have a single actor and we can actually call that say hello, just like we would call a remote task. So we say, get me the first person, the say hello function, and now we're gonna do a remote execution of it. So again, the say hello is essentially a task. And since we called it in a remote fashion, we just get a object reference or a promise back. So this is a promise to return the value once it finishes executing. And again, if we want to materialize what that actual value is, we can use ray.get. So to break this down, we say, get me one of these actors. I want to call the remote function or rather I wanna call say hello remotely where this actor lives and get the value and return it to my Python driver program here. So here we have Bill and Bill is 47. If we look at, let's say the first one, we now have John, John's 52. We can look at the fifth or the sixth person. We have Frank and Frank's 25. So the main concept that I want to communicate here is this idea of remote stateful objects. So tasks don't have any way where you can basically define a variable in the task and then reuse that variable when you call the task a second or a third or a fourth time. But with classes and Ray actors, you can keep, let's say, incrementing the age of a person and that remote actor will remember their age from the last time that Grow Older was called. So to start, let's actually just print out everyone and how old everyone is. So to break this down, again, with Ray, everything's asynchronous. So in this case, when we call Ray say hello remote for these people, we're not really guaranteed the order that these say hellos are gonna return. So when we do a Ray get, Ray get says, wait for all of these functions to return or all of these methods to return. And then once they all return, we can just go through and basically print out the results. So if we run this, we can see Bill is 47, John's 52, Bill again is 22. So now that we know the starting names and, and ages of people, let's say we wanna have some fun and age people differently. So every person needs to remember their own kind of internal age and not everyone in this case, let's say is gonna age at the same rate. So to do this, let's just iterate through our people for P in, for P in people. And then for each person, let's randomly age them some, some amount. So in this case, we're just gonna say, we're gonna randomly call a number of times so in this case, we're gonna just have a for loop that goes a random number of, of iterations between one and 10 in this case. And depending on however many random iterations we're essentially doing this, we're gonna age that person that many times. So this says, go through each person, randomly age them between one and 10 years, and call this that many times. So now we have aged people different amounts. We can Let's just copy this 
and rerun how old each of these people are. We can see here Bill started at 47 and now he's 51. John was 52 and now he's 57. Bill was 22 and now he's 30. So Bill was aged eight years in this case. John was aged five years and the first bill was aged four years. So all of these people basically have their own name, their own age, and the really powerful thing is not only do they have their own internal variables, but when you call methods that mutate or change these internal variables, they're all consistent with the number of times that function was run. So if we call grow older four times on one actor, but six times on another actor, that's gonna maintain the internal state of the first actor while at the same time keeping the age of the second actor. And to kind of demonstrate the guarantees you have with actors, remember I said that with tasks, you have this guarantee that the tasks are running in this distributed fault tolerant fashion. With actors, you essentially have multiple different timelines and each timeline is consistent, but there isn't any consistency between timelines. So what do I mean by that? So in this case, let's just get the first person here. In this case, Bill is 51. So in this case, if we call grow older five times on the first Bill, what Ray guarantees us is that the same remote methods called on the same actor run sequentially but the same method on a different actor doesn't necessarily run sequentially. So in this case, we see Bill starts off at 51, and then we sequentially keep calling this remote function in order, and what gets printed back is the correct order of each incrementing once. But if, say, one of our methods on John needs to run after a method on Bill, we have to enforce some other mechanism in our driver program to make sure that they get called in the right order. So all the methods on Bill run kind of single threaded, but across actors, they run asynchronously and potentially concurrently. So what tasks do really well is they have really fine grained load balancing. So if you think of the, I would say the mass of a task versus the mass of an actor, the actor object is a much bigger object in a sense, whereas tasks are very lightweight. They're just these functions that execute remotely and they return a value. So because of this, the task can basically be load balanced, really fine grained across your whole cluster. Tasks also have support for object locality or data locality. So if you need to run a specific task and you want things to be as efficient as they can, where you're not sending data all around your cluster, you can send a specific task to a specific node if it has the data you need. But because of these things and because tasks are stateless, there's actually a high overhead for a small updates. So for a task to get executed, Ray needs to maintain all of this metadata and needs to send the task to the right node that has the right data, it needs to execute and it needs to return. So if you're doing a lot of small updates with tasks, you have to incur this overhead every time since a task is stateless. And the last bit I'll just mention on tasks that goes hand in hand with the kind of fine grain load balancing is that there is somewhat efficient failure handling. So if a machine goes down that a task's running on, the framework can easily reschedule that on a different machine. Actors, on the other hand, have more coarse grained load balancing. So the actor itself, you kind of treat the abstraction almost as like a whole node itself. So where tasks, you have a bunch of tasks, you fan them out in your cluster, the actors are much heavier in a sense. Once you create an actor on a remote machine, that actor always lives on that machine. That actor doesn't go and get transferred to another machine. And this is really how it can maintain that, that statefulness. Because of this, it again has this poor locality support. So if you create an actor on a given node or a given machine and the data that actor needs to do some computation or the variables that actor needs live on a different machine, you essentially have to shuttle that data and shuffle those values to the machine that the actor is on. Whereas tasks do the opposite. With tasks, you send the computation to the data with actors, you send the data to the, the computation. But because actors have this weightiness or, or inertia, they're not essentially being spawned very quickly and shipped around the cluster. There is low overhead for a small update. So once you create an actor, all the overhead is, is done with. 
Once an actor is created, there isn't much overhead if you're just doing small incremental updates. So if I have an actor class, if I have, let's say my person and I wanna age them a lot, those are very low overhead updates since that actor just lives on a single machine and functions like a normal Python class essentially. And the last bit is to maintain this statefulness in a fault tolerant manner, there is some overhead from checkpointing for the actors. So occasionally the actors need to checkpoint or save or back up in a sense their own state in a way that is really fault tolerant across the cluster. So if a machine goes down with an actor on it in the middle of a computation, when that machine comes back online, everything can be recreated and bring everything to the state right before it went down in, in the cluster. So that wraps up the second video in this mini tutorial series. If you had a question on anything, again, leave a comment below. I'll respond to the comments. If a lot of things seem to be unclear, I'll make a video on those specific things. If a lot of people, let's say, have comments on how actors are spawned. And as always, if you're interested in these types of videos, this type of, of content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting fairly regular updates on data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence,